old to death. May your journey across the Styx be a more peaceful end than this. Debris might be getting stuck in this net. Maybe the dead man was a fisherman. Huh. These don't look like the knife wounds of a man. I'll bet it's the metal from the armor giving the water a bad taste. is going to linger on me. At least the river runs clear now. that the crops haven't been producing this season. Laniki expects more crops every year. The soil needs to rest. So there could be nothing else causing the crop shortage. I didn't say that. You know more than your si My stomach aches. Where would I get? The master keeps... You can't get mint for the master. I'll go find some mint for you. Here you go. The herbs you needed. Fresh is better for my stomach, but since the blight... ...dried is all we have left. The back patch of land is... The back of the... It's a wonder anything grows in this field, with all this mess crushing the plants. The tanners in Kefalonia use something that smells awful to make leather. It can't be good for the soil. The earth is stained here. That can't be good for the soil. It seems like fire is the only way to be sure of ending this blight.
can't believe I have to tidy everything up around here. Now I'm beginning to understand Tefta's anger. The disease crop... Oh, you too. You were so busy looking to the sky that you ignore... What? You dare? The poison in your... I should watch my step around here. You are the eagle bearer. Wonderful. Magic. Very kind of her. So here's the thing. My children... Where do I fit into... They've heard of the eagle... It's an odd request, but... My children are waiting inside... I know this story. Do not fear. If you need a reminder... Good to know. Hello, I'm... The Eagle Barrett. We've heard all about you. Are you going to tell us a story today? Do we have to listen? We've heard it a hundred times. Yes, that's me. And, yes, I'm telling you a story. Gather round and listen, children, while I spin you the yarn of Perseus. The great god of the sea, Poseidon, visited a mortal woman, Sara, a fisherman's daughter. The god of the sea frolicked with her, in the shape of a dolphin, and she knew his love. Ugh. Is this a kissing story? Relax, I'm just setting it up. Soon, Sarah gave birth to a child, the half-blood hero, Perseus. I thought Perseus's mother's name was the Nile, like my sister. 
Yeah, and his father was Zeus. Ah, uh, well, that's true in some versions. Anyway, at some point, baby Perseus fell off a boat and almost drowned. Perseus and his mother Danae were rescued on the island of Seriphos, and Perseus grew up under the care of a kindly fisherman, Victis. Lucky them. Did the gods help? Maybe. Perseus learned to swim and ride and fight, and how to be good and just, even though his father was only a fisherman. I can do all those things too. Yeah, good for you. Except swim or be just. Hush. Now. Victis' brother was ruler of the island, but he was not a good man. He's scum. The cruel king of Seriphos, Victis' brother, Polydectis, decided he wanted to marry Danae, for she was still beautiful and noble. But Perseus knows his mother does not want this. Victis couldn't stop his brother, so it was up to Perseus to interfere and be annoying. Christos, <laughs> that's your job. I will keep the stinky king from marrying you. The cruel and, uh, stinky king became angry. To get rid of Perseus, Polydectis sent him on an impossible quest. Prove yourself a warrior and fetch me a worthy wedding gift, the king said, by killing a great monster. I knew it! Shh, I knew it too. Perseus figured out what he needed. The golden fleece of the winged ram, said to be guarded by a monster who could turn any to stone. Luckily, Perseus was blessed by the gods, and he was guided by Athena's golden-geared owl to the monster's lair. Athena's golden owl? That's dumb. Sounds cute. I want one. And armed with the vorpal sword from the mighty Olethros, he faced the snake-necked, large-headed, shaggy-maned, stony-gazed Katovlepas! No! Huh? Perseus avoided the Katovlepas's killing gaze and snicked the sword, lopping off the creature's head. Ew! He grabbed the golden fleece and wrapped the Katovlepas's head in it. Then he flew back home astride winged Pegasus to save Andromeda, who was about to be eaten by the Kraken. He used the deadly head to turn the Kraken to stone. Wait, the what? What's a Kraken? Uh, like a giant squid? Don't you mean the sea monster Ketos? Pretty sure Homer said, release the Kraken, not release the Ketos. <laughs> you just made that up. Perseus traveled to Argos with his family, and one day competed in the great athletic games. He hurled the discus, and his throw was so great that it shot into the stands and struck King Acrisius. So doing, Perseus killed his grandfather and fulfilled the prophecy. Hurrah! You can't escape your fate. In the end, Perseus and Andromeda settled in Mykine as king and queen and had seven sons and two daughters, the Perside. Wow, that was so wrong and so boring. You are a sticky storyteller, and that story was poop. I am sorry for your audience, Eagle Bear. Uh, Apollo.
Ella. Come on. Thank you for aiding all- I help where I can. A reward.
Let's move! 